Political action, violent action. What kinds of justifications do we have for deciding whether to act violently or non-violently? So this project asks the question about how activists draw the line between political action and violent action. How they justify various forms of action and whether they think that acting politically needs a different kind of justification from acting violently. So one obvious answer is that political action is by definition non-violent. We think of voting, standing for office, signing a petition, and commonsensically, a lot of people draw a very clear line between violence and politics. We say that a group has to give up the means of violence and enter into a political process. We have all kinds of images of people putting down the guns and sitting round the table. Of course, it's not that simple. For some people, armed struggle is eminently political. It's part of the political process. It's for political purposes. There's also a grey area where people think of non-violent action as somehow violent, either because it provokes violence on the part of other parties or on the part of the forces of law and order, or because it's used in a way which is, in some sense, aggressive. For Mahatma Gandhi, he often had to consider very carefully whether a form of non-violent action was, in some sense, violent in its intent or violent in its effects. States have an accepted framework for using violence. Of course, they sometimes are thought to overstep the marker and there are questions about what forms of violent states really are or should be allowed to use. Our project's asking, what is the framework for citizens? And what frameworks for justifying their own non-violent or violent action do citizens actually employ? There's a huge amount of political theory and political philosophy on this subject. In the 20th century, Gandhi was absolutely clear that violence will never achieve anything. Non-violence is difficult. It takes a courage that violent action doesn't take, and it is the only form of action that can change the world. For Franz Fanon, by contrast, the situation is already so violent. In a situation where we have states and armies and colonial powers and poverty, that we can't even think of non-violent political action. Violence is necessary. So political thinkers have thought many thoughts and written many, many words on this subject. There's Machiavelli and Shakespeare, Hobbes and Locke, David Hume, Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels, Rosa Luxemburg, Lenin, Hannah Arendt. So we have lots of political theory. We've got lots of common sense. Between political theory and common sense, there's an underexplored field, which is about activists' practical political reasoning and their ways of justifying how and why they can do what they do.
In this project, we're going into the field and we're talking to current political activists about their understandings of the politics violence frontier. What kind of actions may we use, engage in? What kinds of justifications do we have for deciding whether to act violently or non-violently?